it was funny when you said something I wouldn't discuss on the first date was sexual oh. um, <laughs> <laughs> positions. And like, I don't think sex is a conversation. I think it's an action. So when I'm going on a first date, it's like, I don't want to talk about right. sex. If we get there, we're going to know what that's about. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you were, you were dead on. I don't live with boundaries. I don't need to know the end of the story to jump in. Um, being in relationships with people where they're so cautious or, you know, I got to make sure that the story is w what it says at the end. I'm like, I'm ready to create the story. I think that to be able to say I am happily married is probably the best state you could ever find yourself for anybody. And conversely, if you're unhappily married, it's probably one of the most miserable feelings in the world. So I'm still in between. I'm neither married, uh, I'm not married, I'm not, you know, divorced. So um, I'd like to do it one time and make it work. Your name is Kevin, and this is your story. You're 43, you work in entertainment, you grew up in Los Angeles, and your cultural background is African-American. Uh, my name is Spencer, I'm 44. Uh, I work as a manager for a fitness company. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> African-American. All right, your name is Rhonda. <clears throat> 45, you work as a beautician. Mm. And you grew up in D.C., African-American. So my name is Natasha. I am 42. I do work in the beauty industry. I'm a manicurist. Um, I grew up in D.C., which is weird. Mm. <laughs> um, and I am African. Well, I'm African-American, but I'm mixed. Why Rhonda? I don't know. <laughs> it just hit me. It just hit you, I don't know. Rhonda. All right, I'm you Rhonda. You hate Rhonda? I don't know. I just don't want to be Rhonda. Like, You're Rhonda. not. Rhonda's I'm not Rhonda. Away. Right, Rhonda's gone. I got the other stuff. Though. You did. So, close. so why did you think DC? Why? Just hit me. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely DC. Why 45? It was a guess. I was pretty close. Yeah, you were. I'm not too <laughs> mad about 45. Um, I think you saw wisdom. Well, I enjoy cooking, and that's something that is really a throwback from my childhood, watching my great-grandmother and my grandmother. Uh, I was pretty fortunate. I was raised in a household that had three generations of ladies. I, I remember as a kid, I would get so excited on the day that my great-grandmother would make chicken and dumplings, which was my favorite thing growing up. Now. I make a lot of those recipes, but I update them, put my own healthy twist to them. I actually won an award, a Golden Spoon Award for uh, one of my great-grandmother's dishes that I updated. So culturally, um, my grandmother was German and my grandfather was African-American. Growing up in a biracial home, it gave me, I would like to think, the best of both worlds. They raised me to believe that I was beautiful despite what color looked like. And I think that that has given me so much um, as a woman today to just be strong in this world where, you know, culture sh seems to like really serve um, in a negative space sometimes. If you could be a pro athlete, you would be in the WNBA. First concert you ever went to was Mary J. Something you won't discuss on a first date, sexual positions. Person who has had the biggest influence in your life is your mom. Okay, you asked if I could be a pro athlete, I would be Muhammad Ali. So you were in the boxing, apparently. I mean, okay. I like I like sports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I um I work with men, so I have a lot of clients who are athletes. So, and then growing up, just being around boys, I was raised around a lot of boy cousins and brothers. Like I had to know how to fight. I had to know how to like keep up. Yeah, hold They were gonna beat me up. Yeah, 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 yeah. so. My first concert was Heavy D and Salt and Pepper. <laughs> like I haven't even seen Mary J. Never? <laughs> um, I've, I've been to a concert where I was behind stage, but not like be able to sit there and watch her. That's my girl, like we're sisters. She doesn't even know that. <laughs> uh, something I won't discuss is expectations. Hmm. Um, 
And the biggest influence in my life would be my kids. Hmm. You know, being a mom young and raising a son, it just, it made me have to change so many things about myself as a woman raising a man. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. if you could be a pro athlete, it would be Sugar Ray Leonard. <laughs> Your first concert, I didn't answer that one, I didn't know. Um, something you wouldn't want to discuss on a first date would be commitment. And the person who had the biggest influence in your life is your mother. If I could be a pro athlete, I would be a major league baseball player. First concert I ever went to was the Jacksons. Something you won't discuss on a first date, Pat, uh, my last relationship. And the most uh, influential person in my life has been my grandma. Awesome. It was funny when you said something I wouldn't discuss on the first date was sexual oh. um, <laughs> positions. And like, I don't think sex is a conversation. I think it's an action. So when I'm going on a first date, it's like, I don't want to talk about right. sex. If we get there, we're going to know what that's about. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you were, you were dead on. Yeah. So on the deal breaker side, I'm pretty serious about um, mutual respect. So disrespectful people, rude people. I'm not into the narcissism thing. Uh, so, you know, if you're constantly in the mirror and selfie in and it's just like almost an obsession, that's a turn off to me. Flaky people. Oh, I do not like flaky people. If you say it, you should have some commitment to live up to it. That's kind of what I'm looking for. I've been married, so I would say that uh, right now, I think I'm looking for that guy that we could be friends. I think friendship is, is great. I'm looking for someone that is a communicator, someone that stands for something, someone who has goals. I want a person to be able to come into my life and be who they say they are. You know, I don't have any, I, I can take care of myself. I'm not looking for much, but just realness, you know? Um, that's a big deal. Your top three priorities in life are work, family, and your faith. Uh, something that has disappointed you about past relationships would be someone that was a cheater. You do not believe that people with different political beliefs can have a successful marriage. Um, the most quality to install in your kids is good work ethic and um, belief. All right. Oh, shucks now. <laughs> <laughs> My top three priorities in life are family, financial security, and love. Okay. Something that has disappointed me in past relationship uh, has been lack of trust, mm -hmm. trust issues. Mm -hmm. I do believe people with different political beliefs can have a successful marriage, but I think it would be extremely difficult. Mm -hmm. Uh, the most important quality to instill in them is independence. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I said for you, some of these mirrored mine. I, I said your top three would be family, financial security, and love. Mm -hmm. uh, cheating would be something that has disappointed you in the past. Mm -hmm. That you do believe people with different political beliefs could have a successful marriage. And the most important quality to instill in kids, I said, uh, you would say pride. Awesome. So for me, my top priorities in life are family, love, um, and my belief, my faith. Um, something that hasn't disappointed me in past relationships, I would say, would be, be accountability. I hmm. do not believe I, this one was a kind of tricky for me because I stood like you. Like, I believe that people could do it, but I just think it would be hard. Like, yeah, we, you like Obama. You yeah, know, right? Like, I'm mad at you tonight. One. Like, yeah. sleep on a couch. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, the most important quality to instill in my kids is being accountable. Uh, and again, having pride and having faith and just, you know, being who they say they are. So we kind of like, we yeah. meshed. Five. Yeah. And, and one thing you mentioned that I didn't was accountability. That's so huge. People are very reluctant to be responsible and take accountability for their mistakes or their actions. They want to blame other people. They want to. That's a big deal. Yeah. And like with my kids, I'm so big on accountability. Like 
they didn't do it, she didn't do it, mm, he didn't it do me. it. It wasn't me. <laughs> well, who was it? You know, and to this day, you know, accountability is a big thing for me. I agree. We is. all make mistakes. Mm -hmm. We're human. And we're human. So if I take accountability, you know, with that, you'll respect me. And it leads to trust. Because exactly. now I know, oh, I can see your, your personal You're trying. integrity. Yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. So yeah, big deal, big deal. Accountability, guys. <laughs> you I said that I would date you so now that we've talked I said that I would right so when we when I first opened my eyes I said I probably wouldn't okay date you. okay I thought maybe she's more like a b-girl or something like that okay. like yo okay. yo yo what you know yo yo <laughs> like a little East bit Coast. Like, yeah East yeah Coast. yeah but yeah. I was like you know I, I don't know I don't know if we would mm -hmm. necessarily Bye. vibe and then after sitting and talking with you for a while, I said that I would. Okay, awesome. I had such a nice time just chatting with you. Mm -hmm. I was very impressed by you. The mm. depth you showed, the, the conversation mm -hmm. was so like clean and it just felt like it was a natural flow. And again, you don't know when you just glance or mm -mm. amuse someone, you don't know mm -mm. what they're thinking or how they, how they move in the world. But I think you're a quality woman and uh, it was a pleasure to meet you. Awesome. So for me, when I opened my eyes, I said, Natasha, you have to get out of your box. <laughs> and you have to think different. You can't always have a look to someone that you want or a, a, a perception, like try something new. And so after talking to you, I was like, wow, I enjoyed the conversation. We kind of like had some of the same answers. You know, the vibe was cool. So I just know in my life right now, I got to open up a little bit, so. <laughs> I'm a hugger, so I'll give you a hug. <laughs> Meet you too, thank you. It was fun. It was a little nerve wracking going in, but then once we start talking, it just felt very um, peaceful and calm and yeah. natural. But just so you know, when you walked up, I was like, oh, he smells good. So thank is, you. He has a nice cologne on I was like, okay. Thank you. Cool. And thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> that was cool. Stay we go up? the same way or what we do? <laughs> I'm gonna go this way. Thank you. Salt and cake.